everyone. Um, today we're going to have a look at getting some artwork into Illustrator, um, working with Type in Illustrator, and um, creating up a logo so that you can um, use it for printing onto a t-shirt. Um, so we're going to today we're going to use some mostly Illustrator. Um, we might touch on Photoshop later on, so that'll be handy. And um, we're also going to use some web resources. So we're going to have a look at the font for um, installing fonts. And also we'll grab some web images and have a look at some image tracing. So um, the gen that's the general plan for, um, for this unit. So first thing that we'll um, do is we'll start in Illustrator which I'm in Illustrator now. Um, if you haven't used Illustrator before, it's a vector editing program. It's really um, fantastic. The, one of the main reasons that we like to use Illustrator for artwork creation is that the um, images are vector-based. So being vector-based means that the lines are mathematically calculated, and so they don't really have a finite resolution. So if we have a look at this in wireframe, so I can just hit, com whoops, let's make sure I'm actually in Illustrator here, um, and I hit Command Y, we can see that it's showing me the wireframe of this image that I've got here. And when I zoom in, you can see that these lines, um, these are the vector lines that make up the, the image, okay? So if I was in Photoshop, which I could go in and if I had a look at an image in Photoshop we can see that as I zoom in things get more pixelated so Photoshop uses pixels and um, Illustrator primarily we use vectors in it we can bring in pixelated images as well and um, have those as part of the artwork but those pixelated images will always have a finite resolution unless we trace them but we'll have a look at tracing as well okay so here we are in Illustrator so first first up we're going to be working in an A4 because the printer that we're going to be using um, to print onto our t-shirts is the Soulgrass A4 um, die sub printer and so an A4 has a size of 297 by 210 millimeters okay and it had and generally we work to a resolution if we're using images we think about a resolution of 300 dots per inch as, the, as a minimum kind of resolution to get things looking pretty um, nice and tidy okay um, if we we're looking at um, photographic work for our high quality output we might look at a higher resolution than 300 dots per inch um, but 300 dots per inch will you know will do for this application okay so um, how do we start out it can be tricky um, with your t-shirt I think coming up with a theme or you know a piece of text that you're going to use for your t-shirt it's a pretty open kind of brief and sometimes that is the hardest way to go so if you might have a sports team that you want to use their um, you know create a logo for or create an image for you might have a group of friends that goes out and you know you might go bike riding on the weekend or you might have um, a dance um, thing that you're into or whatever it's it's cool you can that might be a good thing to use if you're stuck and you can't come up with something then I recommend getting onto something like a random band name generator and that they can produce some really fun kind of like um, strings of text you can use or you might like to use like the lyrics out of a song or the name of a song or something like that that you're really into. But if you can make it personal to yourself and something that you're actually into doing, then you're going to find it much more enjoyable to be able to work on. You know, you need that motivation in doing this sort of stuff, okay? So let's give things a go. So I've got here just kind of like an example um, bit of a logo there that I you know I'm cranking them out all the time um this is one a friend of mine he used to have when he was a kid this dude skin t-shirt and um so I like to whenever I'm uh got some time make him up new kind of like t-shirts and wind cheaters that have got different dude skin logos just for my own entertainment really um so that's just an example of a logo. I think one of the things that you can see on this logo is that it's it's partially distressed. 
it's not super distressed but you can see that the line work if we zoom in we can see that it's got some sort of jagged edges and some slightly worn out bits um, and so the idea I think when you're printing your t-shirts it's worth thinking about that um, getting a slightly worn look to your logo because that can help to make it look interesting on the t-shirt okay when you're sort of aiming for something that looks a little bit worn it gives you a little bit more room to move for mistakes in the printing process when you're new to it okay so if you're not aiming for like absolute precision then um it'll make your life a little bit easier okay so let's get started um so first things that i want to do is make a new document so i can just go command n and open up a new document in Illustrator and I'm straight into it okay and this is giving me some different um, options here I like to run in millimeters all the time um, so I've got that set up so I am going to select an A4 and I'm going to create okay if it's not giving you an A4 option for some bizarre reason um, you often you'll find it under print but if not you can just type in the dimensions make sure it's in millimeters 297 210 and you can go vertical or horizontal it doesn't matter okay it's just up to how you want it to go on your t-shirt but I'm going to choose a horizontal for this one okay so we've got it happening um, and um, I've just kept everything pretty simple to start out with as far as the layout of Illustrator goes. I'm in a really kind of classic mode. Um, you can see up here Essentials Classic. And um, that, I think that'll keep things nice and basic for, um, for the start. Okay, so I thought the first thing that we might have a look at is grabbing ourselves a bit of an image and doing an image trace because that's a really handy thing that Illustrator offers. So we can take a pixelated image and we can turn it into vectorized artwork. So we can see in this one here, I've um, taken some, you know, images and um, I've sort of hand drawn over the top of it a bit as well. But basically, um, it allows us to, yeah, create these kind of like, if we have a look at it, these um, kind of like vectorized artworks. Um, and it gives us good control over it. So let's have a look here. So what am I going to do? Um, I haven't really got a super tight plan on what we're going to do, but I thought that first things first, let's go across to my web browser. Now, we'll have a look at the font in a little bit and picking out fonts, but I, you know, I recommend the font. It's really easy. You can, it's got plenty of fonts and they're all freebies pretty much. So that's a good one to go with. Okay. Um, so I thought maybe that um, for our logo, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I thought I would maybe choose one of the most um, stupid cars that, you know, we've ever seen in Australia, the P76. Um, and uh, I thought it's it's got a kind of iconic shape. It's quite hideous. Um, and that if you can get something that has got an iconic shape that's easily recognizable, then you've got a good chance of your trace working nicely, okay? So there's a few things to know about how the trace works. So I thought, let's have, you know, let's use the P76 as, as an example. Um, and I don't really, you know, with all these kinds of experiments, I don't really know where I'm going. I just like to, um, yeah, get into it and see what happens. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got this pink P76. It's not super high res, but it's good enough for what we're going to do. Okay, because we're going to trace it down. So I usually just copy it out and, um, and I paste it in there. So we're doing this for more educational kind of uh, purposes. So we're not really crediting the photographer in this case, but if we're using it for for commercial purposes, then um, there could be a case for that. It depends on how far we manipulate the image, okay? Um, but we're gonna use this as our base. And um, so I bring this in, and this is brought up on the side here in my Essential Classic Image Trace. If you couldn't see Image Trace for um, in your version of Illustrator, you can come up here and you can come down to Image 
trace and just tick that off and it'll bring it up in a window near you, okay? So we've brought, I've just copy and pasted this image in. Hasn't really done anything too exciting yet. Um, so the first thing that um, we want to do is we can see our settings up here. At the moment, it's set to black and white. So we can set it to color, grayscale, black and white. These are kind of presets, but they make things pretty easy. And let's start out with 30 colors and let's hit preview. Okay, so we really can't see anything until we turn on preview. Okay, and now we can, I'll zoom in a little bit more now. We can see that it started to trace around this image. And what it's done is it's looked for similar colors and it's tried to draw them in big blocks. Okay, so at the moment we've got 30 colors. It's actually looking quite interesting. It's looking like some kind of, uh, yeah, kind of uh, pastiche of, a, um, of some kind of, um, yeah, some kind of painting. It's actually quite semi-interesting. Okay, but let's have a look at what else we can do with it. So one of the first things, if we're working with colors, is we can take those colors and we can pull them right down to just a few colors. So I've set it to five. And you can see here that we've started to get a more graphic style as we go along and I can pull it down even further. We can see that that like pink shape of the car, you know, is really kind of standing out in this scene. I'll zoom out a little bit more. Okay, and we can pull it down even further. Um, okay, so, and we can start, you know, it's only using three colors there or it's using, you know, I'll push it up. It's using more colors. Okay, so so that's um, that's an interesting thing that we can do with it. Also, you'll see here that we've got the paths, so we can have small amount of paths, which will generally make things tend to look a little bit more blocky and a little bit smoother, or a large amount of paths. We'll tend to see things try to trace along with the image a bit better. So I usually keep that pretty low. And then we've got corners less or more. So if we go down to less, we'll tend to see less jaggy, jaggy sort of bumps on things and kind of a little bit smoother. Um, it's a bit subtle, but it, um, it helps out if you're trying to do a really precise trace on some type or something like that, um, being having that adjustment. And the noise, basically the noise looks for any dark spots um, and we can set the size of how, yeah, basically how big that noise is. So you can see here as I'm pushing the noise up, it's uh, filtering out some of the smaller blocky stuff and things are getting slightly more um, abstracted. Yep, or as I pull the noise down, it's including a lot of those sort of smaller bits of image information that are within the scene. So we can see that it's a little bit more jaggy and but it's a you know it, it can go either way so that's an interesting way to go and a couple of other things you got down here you've got ignore white basically means that um it'll leave the white alone it'll won't leave you with anything um it'll just um leave a hole where the white was so that's one way of looking at things we've got a couple of other ones so we're looking at color but we can go to grayscale and we can flip it into that. And again, we can control the amount of greys that we've got available. Yep. So that's, you know, looking quite interesting. And we can see we've got the same kind of path controls here. And we can go right down to black and white. Okay. And that's just giving us black or white. And that's a good fun one. I like that. And then we've got this threshold that we can sort of push where the gray limit is of where things fall into black or they fall into white okay so um i like messing around with that one as well i think it's a good one look at those sort of you know interesting ways that the shapes work together so that is a good one i like to um when i'm working on that grab a few different images and trace them out i think one of the main things that you need to have when you are tracing is a good recognizable image that's got a good sort of shape and form and it's got nice strong colors that gives the um, software something to you know really get into tracing if i have a look in wireframe and command y is the standard for the wireframe um, within illustrator 
we can see that it hasn't got any vectors. So if you remember before, I had a look at that logo, that tough Parmesan one, or oh, the dude skin one, sorry. And uh, we can see all this um, information. We can see if we, whoops, if we go back to Illustrator to the other file and have a look at it. When I'm in wireframe, we see that we can't see any information, but in normal view we can. What does that mean? It means at the moment that Illustrator can still work with this um, it still sees it as an image, but it's creating a sort of vectored preview over the top. If we decide that we're happy with how that's looking, um, we can just go object expand and we can go expand object and fill. You don't need to touch it. You just go, okay, great. And now if we have a look in wireframe mode, you can see that we can see the, um, the contents of that trace so that looks pretty good um that's a bit of fun let's go back to wireframe okay and whenever i'm doing this um one of the good things about illustrator is you can stack heaps of stuff in a file this is called the artboard this white section here and this gray stuff just think of this as like your you know your rest of your desk or something if this was sitting down on the desk so you can just chuck stuff off to the side and it's cool so i'm going to go back to um photoshop i'm going to select another p76 okay and i'm going to copy that image thanks this one's looking a little bit fancier and let's chuck it in there okay so it's pretty big it doesn't effectively matter too much what size it is in illustrator i'm going to shrink it down a bit okay and we've got our trace up here but we're not seeing any trace yet. Yeah, that's because we haven't got the preview turned on. So we stick that on. All right, oh, okay. So that's gone straight into um, looking interesting. And okay, that's cool. I think I'm just gonna go, yeah, that, that will do. I think it, I might just tweak the paths a bit. I might just investigate the threshold and see if I can get it looking more interesting. But it was was actually looking pretty good where it was sitting. I'll try just pushing it. You can see how I push it higher and it starts to include that bit of noise off the road. So I could actually probably, if I turned the noise size up, you can see that I can start to filter out some of that road, um, the gravel on the road, but it's probably like not worth the hassle of doing that oops so I'll just pull this down a bit oh, he's looking good yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with it about there okay so what am I going to do I'm going to go object I'm going to go expand object and fill that's cool okay and now i've got my um i've got my scene okay that's good a few other tricks to know about uh working with this is that we are um it's a it's an image um let's have a look at it here um uh, we can see it's got a frame around it even though when we go back we can't see it because it's a bit of wide, okay? And the other thing, when I click on this, it's all currently grouped together into one group, so it doesn't fall apart, okay? And so we can see the same on this one over here. I'll do it on the gray for starters, just so you can see. So if I try to move it, okay, it all just moves in one thing. I'm using my black um, selector arrow over here, um, the selection tool, um, the V, Okay, hit V to, for your selection tool, the direct selection tool, the one under the white one, that's an A. Okay, so we're going to ungroup this. So I'll go Shift, Command, G, I'll do it a couple of times. I don't know why, but usually you have to in Photoshop. I didn't illustrate it, sorry. Actually, I might do it once more, and it should start to pull apart. It's just something to do with the hierarchy of the way it works. I don't know what it is, but that's the way that Illustrator likes to work. Um, okay, so what we can then start to do is if we've got excess stuff that we don't need, we can start pulling it away 
and hopefully it won't be joined to everything else in our scene. So we'll pull a bit of that stuff away. I'm going to use my, I'm going to just sort of draw around that and we can start stripping, stripping back to get the parts of, you know, our scene we want. So, so that's the way that I like to do it. And then when I'm happy with the bits I got, I'll just go around them and I'll group them together and I've got myself a bit of a logo starting to happen. But I like this one a little bit better. I'm doing this one on the artboard, so I'll just do this really quickly. Um, group that, okay. I'm just going to grab that corner and I'm just going to delete all that. So I can see I've got some jaggy bits down there I don't want. I don't necessarily want that. I'm using the direct selection tool here, which lets you select bits of paths. Um, but you just got to select the path once and um, that's about all you need to do. You just hit delete twice and it'll sort it out okay that is not looking too bad for starters so okay i'll group that together here was my second tier um, logo example i'll just ditch that now I'm, I'm happy with number one the illustrator file sizes are small so you, you know you can pile them up if you want don't worry about chewing up too much disk space so i'm going to save as now always um you know good thing to save in illustrator it can be a little bit savage if it crashes okay. sometimes it'll come back with a uh, restored file sometimes it won't okay so i prefer not to depend on illustrator and um yeah it's it's a it's reasonably memory hungry i suppose on your computer or resource hungry and um you know it, it can fall over so if you're not managing what software you've got to open at any given time so we're thinking about that okay i'm just going to save that i'll save that as p76 uh, logo example um that's cool and i'm going to save it in an ai format so ai stands for adobe illustrator that's its native format Adobe can also save in an EPS, encapsulated postscript, which is kind of like an industry-wide standard for vector artwork. So that's pretty flexible, you know, in the publishing industry. Um, but um, both of these types of files can use fonts and will require fonts to be sent with the file, whereas the Adobe PDF um, contains the fonts or the curves for the fonts. So... Um, you know, Adobe PDF is a really good way of proofing work to people, handing it around, you know, making it easy to, to move around. So um, if you're doing that, try and always keep your um, an AI or an EPS. I usually just work in AI these days. And that means you can easily edit your files. There's a few options that are different from that, but we won't bother with them for the moment. Okay, save all that. Um, that's all fine. Done, okay. So we've, we've saved, it's good, we're locked off. It's time to start moving on from this piece of artwork for starters. Okay, so um, as I said before, we need to work on getting ourselves a bit of type. Um, and a really good place to go for type, I think, is to get along to the font. So the font.com. If you've got Adobe CC, you'll actually have access um to some good font packages through that some really good commercial fonts and um i'm a big fan of the quality of those but um you know um there's lots of good fun ones here within the um i think within the font that for you to check out so um you can you know just click on some action and you know just browse through them take your time i find that you know, you start to zone in on what you like the look of. But um, when you're doing that, I recommend sort of like maybe downloading five or six fonts at a time because you never really know how they're going to look when you set the letters of your um, theme together. It can it can be all over the place, okay? So, um, yeah, get yourself a good stash of fonts and it'll make your um, setting a lot easier, I think. All right, so, um, when, and when you get them, you just download them, unzip the package, throw it into your font manager, um, which is just called font book on your, um, on your Mac. I don't know what it's called on Windows, but I'm sure it's not too hard to figure that out either. Okay, so let's get back to Illustrator and let's start working with some type.
Okay, so I'm going to slam in. I'm just going to select my type tool here, which is my T, and I'm, it comes in with a bit of Latin, and that's just saying, like, hey, what do you think you're doing? You've chucked in some type, and uh, it just lets us know that there's some type there for starters. Okay, so comes in in like a bit of myriad or something you know just something extra boring just to get things kicking off and here we go we can check our fonts now i've got some fonts installed and i haven't really gone too bonkers on this machine um but um what am i gonna do okay i'm just gonna choose this kind of like slightly um uh, you know, it's kind of like a slightly sci-fi, 70s, early 80s sci-fi actually looking font. I don't mind that actually. Um, I used that on some tags the other day and it worked out pretty good. Okay, so let's have a look at that. I need a name. Okay. I got myself. Okay, so there's a name for my font. So let's chuck that in there, okay. Um, now I'm used to just doing this sort of stuff and it kind of like falls together um, things might just come together for you and start working out or you may have to really push it around a bit you know um, you might have to experiment with where you set your type um, you know you might set it small just off to one side like a little detail thing you might set your type like really big okay um, you might set it on a curve we'll have a look at some of the tools for that in a second and um, yeah, there's lots of options. Okay, so let me, and we're gonna work in black and white for a while. We'll come around to colors later on, okay? So we've got some type. We've got a bit of a logo. I think we're going pretty good. I better stop this video now and then I'll start again in the next one, I think. Okay, so what am I doing? Whoops, I don't need Creative Cloud at the moment.